Hello friends, welcome again to my YouTube channel where I share interesting ideas and novel ways of doing things. I know it's been quite a while since I've uh, put one up, but we've had some uh, concerns and different things that have taken up some of my time. One is my wife had a hip replacement and then later when recovered from that she had a bad fall and, and broke her arm extremely bad and uh, yeah lots of trips to the hospital back and forth and uh, when the weather's good uh, go out on the dirt bike during the summertime but now that it's winter uh, starting to spend a little time in the shop doing some little projects there. These are some of the ones here that uh, I've been working on this week just for fun, just to get back into it. And uh, But last June I saw an online demonstration by uh, Cade Bolger. If you want to get some really good ideas and ways to do things, you should go to his site and uh, sign up for uh, online demonstrations. They happen every so many months. Anyway, uh, the project that he did and that I've copied and and gone a little bit farther with it is uh, this, he called it a lotus flower. So it looks like a lotus flower. And uh, that's, you see it a little closer there. It's, uh, I've always wanted to do one of those bowls where you took a, a block of wood and uh, spin it uh, kitty corner on the corners and uh, make a bowl like that but this one's gone a little bit farther where you have one on the top and one on the bottom and there's quite a bit of procedures to do that and uh, in this video I'm just going to go over the drive system I've come up with several uh, ideas that nobody else has ever tried and if something like that works for you it uh, you might want to do it and uh, to make it a lot safer so uh, with these projects, of course, you start with a block of wood and then spin it uh, corner to corner. And uh, you can see right away where my fingers are there. That's just a point, so it doesn't attach to anything. And uh, uh, some of the methods I've seen, you know, look quite dangerous. But uh, I wanted to make this uh, a safe project. And I've changed, uh, done a few things here, which I'm going to show you. First, I'll uh, demonstrate uh, the way I've seen a lot of people do it. And then I'll show you uh, a couple methods that I've done. One requires a little bit of machine work. And uh, the other one, anybody can do that uh, very simply. So I'm going to move down to my lathe in the basement. I've got a little lathe down there and uh, show you how a lot of people mount that particular block of wood. So here's kind of a, I might call it a typical setup like I've seen on uh, numbers of, uh, on a few videos that I've watched uh, or looked at. And I believe this was done in a demonstration that I saw too where you just stick the one point into the uh, your Morris taper hole in your headstock here and uh, then in the tail stock you use a live center taking that little center point out and sticking the end in, into that little hole here. Uh, when I looked at that and thought of this thing revolving yep, uh, at high speed boy oh boy that just to me was too dangerous for me I think I would need uh, some of that body armor that they have, the police have, I don't have that, and a really good uh, face mask because, you know, we all get catches every so often and you get a catch with this revolving here, it's just going to rip it off and it's going to become a missile and uh, probably more dangerous than some of the other ones because you got all these points here revolving here. And another thing that I thought maybe wasn't the best is this here, even though you push it up tight, uh, I'll just hold this here, there's really no grip there, you know, very little to no grip. So I thought, well, I got to come up with something uh, different that will, will hold it securely and I don't have to be afraid of it uh, falling up. So I'm going to show you the parts, the first idea that I came up with, and then I came up with a 
and that may be difficult for most of you to do, but uh, I come up with another idea, so I'll be showing that today, and uh, how you make that. So this is how I uh, solve the problem of uh, spinning this uh, corner, kitty corner, kitty corner on the lathe without and uh, having some precautions so it's, it doesn't become a missile. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking I got to have a something bigger than the Morris taper in your drill in your lathe, and. Uh, and I, I want to have some way to grip that, and I thought I could make this or I could make that, you know, and shape it, do whatever, you know, to, to get to that three-sided uh, shape there. And then I come up with this idea one day, I was thinking, well, I've, I've got all these uh, hole saws of all different sizes, and they've got nice teeth on there, and uh, they're a lot bigger than that more staper hole. Uh, I could attach that to the headstock, it would, uh, I think that would work. So I was thinking back and I had uh, a Morris taper piece uh, for a lathe and the ends were just left straight so you could machine it or do something or make it into something. I've had them for a few years and I thought, hey, why don't I uh, put this in the lathe? Um, I have adapters to go on to here. Now there's a metal lathe. This is my advantage that <laughs> I have a metal lathe. I make a lot of stuff that way. And uh, lay it down and put the thread on there. Now I couldn't put a thread on there with the, uh, it's, the metal's still quite hard. You can machine it. And you could have a machine shop make one of these for you quite simply. Uh, so I had to cut the threads on the, on the lathe too. Uh, so anyway, so that's all that is to it. So with a, I have to put a washer there because I couldn't get the thread right down to the front. Now you could use a, use a drill chuck in the headstock and uh, mount uh, mount one of the pieces that uh, come with the uh, with your hole saw set. And I'm sure most woodworkers have sole, hole saw set. And that could be done, um, but I thought it stuck out a little bit too far for my liking, liking so I wanted to make something a little closer. That, so that's why I, I came up with this idea here. And uh, so you can see how that works. That just pops into the t t taper, the Morse taper in the headstock, and you can put any size uh, hole saw that you have on there. And uh, that works whippity do. Uh, since I've come up with this idea, uh, I understand. I come to find uh, a couple other ideas that other people have done, and uh, one of them was rubber duckies. That uh, you've probably heard of those. Those rubber duckies that uh, some company makes there for holding stuff that's different, and. Uh, I believe another woodworker in the area here told me that he saw on one of the things that they make something similar to this uh, with the hole in the teeth, right, all machined and made into one piece. So if you found uh, a supply to that, uh, you could get one that's already made similar to that, and that's a great idea too. And then the tailstock, uh, they usually just use uh, some sort of live center, take the little center part out, and uh, then put that point in there. And to me, that's dangerous too. So this isn't exactly what I would have liked to do. I could make something a little better to that. I've, uh, I have this piece of pipe, and uh, it enlarges that hole to one inch. Now I could... Uh, machine another piece to go on to here, aluminum or something like that, that would be, that this could actually come out even bigger and, and hold it, hold it better. But uh, I've done a number with this, I haven't had any problems, so it's just a matter to enlarge uh, the tailstock to an adequate size to hold the work there, so anyway, um, that's one of the methods that I've done there. Now I'll set this up on the lathe and uh, show you 
what it looks like there. So anyway, um, yeah, so I guess you're all wondering what the other method is that uh, you could make your own drive system there. So I'll show you that next and then we'll actually make one on this video. Here we go with this alternative setup using the hole saw which has been threaded onto a, a, a Morris taper that fits in your headstock. And uh, I've enlarged that uh, hole by putting this little piece of uh, pipe on here. So it's enlarged uh, a small hole which is usually 5 sixteenths or so for most of the center points on a live center up to one inch. And this isn't exactly what uh, I, I would like to do this a little better too. If I had a chunk of aluminum, I would uh, lay the chunk of aluminum and actually flare this out so it actually comes in farther and grips there. So with this hole saw, you've got obviously teeth on here, teeth on there, and you can, and once you have this made to fit, fit the 5 8 fine thread on your, uh, that's in the hole saw, this is an inch and a half one, so you can see that's a lot bigger than this little one here. I could screw a larger one in or smaller one depending on what size of block of wood that you have. But now with this on here, I can't, I can work as hard as I can and this is not going to slip. And it's held well enough so if you get a catch on here, it's not going to fly off and kill you. So uh, this was the first, this is the first idea of course I come up with and I use this little lathe here. and. Uh, made a couple small ones there and everything went fell and I lived to tell tell about it so that's an advantage for you guys I guess okay here's my uh, little drive driver here just made out a little piece of wood anyway you want to see what the other side looks like the other side is a three-cornered driver and uh, it uh, fits in a, in your in your regular chuck you just make that so it fits right in there tighten it up and uh, you've got a drive system now this part here fits right into that corner there and you can see how much hold you have there and uh, I made uh, a couple of these here using this system here and it's worked quite well now, one reason why I come up with this idea, because I was thinking, well, that hole saw idea, that's fantastic. And, uh, but most people won't go, wouldn't be able to, or they won't take the time to have a, a one machine. And I think, as I said, that there is uh, systems out there that are, are better than just using the hole in the headstock. But uh, I have a homemade lathe here in the shop and I don't have a Morris taper in it so I had to come up with some idea that I could use, uh, do this on this lathe because it's a little bit nicer. And uh, then the idea of course that anybody can do this so that's where I come up with this. this uh, that's the reason I come up with this idea. And. Uh, so it's very simple. You just take a piece of wood, uh, machine it to fit into your chuck really well, and then you drill a hole on the other side that's larger. I'm not sure what I'd drill this one to, probably inch and a quarter or something like that. And then, it uh, might have been an inch and a half too, because that's what size uh, hole saw I'm using there. And then I just took some body filler and uh, filled the hole up and taped the corners of the uh, block of wood, mounted on the lay, squeezed it up, let it dry, pulled the piece out, and uh, pronto. A little bit of sanding, cleanup, whatever on the edges there. And I got a custom made drive system that uh, works like nobody's business there. So uh, we'll go into actually making one of these. And uh, then the next video, I'll have to make another video so you don't uh, go to sleep and uh, you get a night's rest before you go to the next one uh, on actually using this. Because to, be, to build this project here, there's uh, 
you need a little extra instruction and I've got some great ideas uh, when I do this here that uh, you'll, you'll, you'll want to know because you can see that this is machined on both sides and there's no way to, to hold it to do that. So, but uh, anyway, so you'll have to stay tuned here for, for the next uh, video. Okay, here you can see this uh, block mounted up, uh, chuck, adapter, and you can see that there's a, this comes up on your thing here a, quite a ways. And so it's, it's held in there. If you get a catch on this, it's not going to throw out and kill you. And the, end, the other end is not too bad, but uh, it's a full inch there, right on the corners there, and it's, it's held up quite well. Uh, another time I'll make a, a bigger one for there but uh, and it's so that's all there is to it there and it spins and it's fairly safe here and what I've done here is just take a piece of wood uh, use a hardwood this is birch because that's what I have and uh, then I've mounted it on this chuck with one of the little those little things that go in there with the screw. So you just screw it, drill a hole and screw it in. The other side's going to be drilled anyway, so it works out perfectly. The first time I did, I think I used a larger piece with uh, uh, a faceplate and screws, but then I thought, hey, why not try this? So what I'm doing here, I'm going to make a copy of this particular one here. So I've me measured the distance, and since I'm using this chuck, I can't don't have it off to measure to get everything just right so I can use this one and take the measurements right off of there so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it I made a mark there and I want to make it about that, that deep there, okay. and uh, then I'm using a one of these calipers here that I use in the machine but it's the batteries are gone etc and uh, then I'm measuring I want to make this distance here uh, for the th for the dovetail and what I'm going to do here I'm just going to set that on there and uh, center it just so you can see uh, I guess I can hold my Okay, so that's, uh, I'm going to bring that down to there to match uh, this particular chuck here. So when I take it off, it should uh, fit there. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a little cut down here. And I've got this uh, old butcher knife. Uh, come up with this idea from Cade too. He got one on a yard sale for 25 cents and I had to pay five bucks at Value Village for this one, but it's it'll work pretty good. Okay. Now I just have to take that down to the right size and uh, I think I might just use a, a regular parting tool for that. If you've got it using a caliper, it's a good idea to check it every so often. Oh, that line's pretty good that I put on there. I just about have to remove it. Uh, 
just goes over top of there. Just gonna tight. <laughs> Okay, that. Now the jaws on here have a. You may be able to see that on there. That they go down and grip in a little bit. So I want to make a a little place for those uh, that uh, dovetail to go down into, and yet it's supported on the inside there. So I think I'll use. Uh, Try a skew chisel. And I'll just take that. Right okay. And uh, that should be it. So I just unscrew this. And we can try it and see whether it, uh, now on this lathe, as it's homemade, it's a little bit different. I have to open it up, lock that up there. And now I can take uh, that out. Take that out. And uh, now we'll see if that fits in there. Okay. Simple as that. Uh, this comes down here to uh, just a small amount, so it's gripped all the way around. So that's in there, super good. So now we just have to uh, drill our hole, and uh, I can get set up for that. I'll just uh, set that in there. It's pretty well exactly the size that I had there. Okay, so I'll get this set up and drill the, to drill the hole. Okay, I just quickly drilled a hole there. Um, I'm sure you didn't have to watch me doing that. And uh, you have to drill your hole deep enough so when you put your block of wood in there, you can look in there and see that there's a, a space there to the bottom. Okay, so we're going to... Just we got one more step and we'll be done. Okay, here's my little uh, drive adapter. Super simple to make. Uh, just it may take a matter of minutes. So now we're going to put the uh, filler in here pretty quick here. And I'm just using a, a body filler. Uh, you could use other types of hard fillers uh, that you might have in the shop. I'm not quite certain what you could use offhand, but this works quite well. I've used it in different instances, even in the shop for woodwork there, where I wanted to fill it. So, so you're going to use your block of wood. It can be any size block of wood. It doesn't have to be the one that you... Uh, and you have to tape the corners, so because you don't want this stuff sticking on. So we'll just tape that that way. I'm just using scotch tape. It's nice and smooth. And, okay. So just one quarter taped up will be all you need. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and uh, get ready to do that. And then we'll pop it on the lathe there and, and uh, 
have her get done. Okay, I think we're ready to go. What you need is a big enough blob of uh, filler of some sort that will fill that hole completely. It's good to have a little extra than not enough when I do it. So, And then this uses a hardener, which is really nice. It's almost like you might call it, you've used epoxy where you have a hardener. So this will allow it to set up fairly quickly. And as cold as it is today, it will take a little bit of time, but I can turn the heat up in the shop. <laughs> okay, so you have to, this has been sitting around for a while, you kind of need it because it's got gookies in there and whatever. And uh, if you don't, it'll squirt out just with a, a liquid stuff. But, and this is blue. You can get it in different colors. Oops, I got a little bit too much, but I guess too much is better than not enough. Okay, so now, and the reason, sometimes it's, it's brown. This happens to be a blue tube. And then you mix, you have to mix it up. I'm just using a, you can see I've done this before on this piece of melamine. And uh, so get, you have to be, once you, the reason for the color is, so when you have it totally mixed up and you have hardener in all of it, it uh, it'll be one uniform color. You don't want to have light spots and then dark spots. And what I do is I take this on the side and I paint it right off and bring it around and squish it down and do everything possible to get it totally covered. Mix up. I taught metal work mechanics and I used to do a fair amount of body work fixing coal cars and stuff so I'm used to using this stuff. It's kind of smelly but and then we just take once we got that mixed up we can take this and uh, I should have put the, uh, the gloves on, those rubber gloves. So fill that in, make sure it's stuck, worked into the sides. That's, that's where it's important. I should have had something else to work on that there. But anyway, we got that pretty good. Well, I definitely got enough, that's for sure. Okay. Okay, so it's all filled up. So I'll go get this, go over to the lathe and get this set up here before this hardens. If you got hot weather, you've only got three or four minutes, five minutes maybe before it sets up. So anyway, I'll go get set up here. Okay, I think I got this over here before it started to set up, so it should be okay. Okay, I even got some gloves on here. Okay, so make sure you get the part that you've, uh, with the tape on there. And we'll just push that in there. And let's see, we got to come up with which corner? That corner there, I guess. Okay, so we'll bring that up. Lock our tailstock here. And I'll go tighten that up a bit. Okay, push it up tight. Okay, now it, as you can see, it's squeezed, squeezed out there a little bit. But uh, you can take uh, your finger, and I got gloves, and uh, kind of helps to be a little bit more prepared with something. <laughs> There, okay. We'll go that one and this one. I had plenty for sure, so I'll just take that off. Okay. 
And that's our drive system. We just have to wait for that to set up now. So I guess in my instance, I'll uh, go in and make supper, I guess. And uh, clean up and throw the excess away there. And before long, we'll be ready to start uh, making one of those things in the next video. Okay, let's see if we can get this apart. Yeah, that was a good supper tonight. But anyway, uh, yeah, it should just pop off of there. So we'll just take the, the back part. Hello. And there we go. Things came apart a lot easier. You can see that just popped right clean there. And uh, let me take this off here. I think I can... There we go. Okay, get a better shot of that. Okay, there's the there's our drive system, and uh, I marked it uh, here and marked it on here, so you can put it back in the same place. But that shouldn't matter. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this uh, over here to the. Uh, this sander. Yeah, okay, that's all there is to it. Okay, we've got one more thing to do before we use it. The first time I uh, used it, I just used it just like you see it here. But what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole right in the center there. So when your tip goes in there, it doesn't bottom out in there. And it, that way it can always stay tight even if these wear a little bit. Okay, so I'll do that next. You can drill this on the lathe if you want to. It's not a, it's not a thing critical, but if you just take it by hand and, and just remove that center there. Okay, so now we've got our center in there. Okay, let's mount this up so you can see how it looks. Okay, here it is all locked up, ready to, uh, ready to turn. And uh, with a lot, uh, a greater degree of safety than some of the other ones I said. And it's just so simple to make this driver here for these, this project here. But if you're able to buy something that's uh, manufactured that uh, does the same thing, uh, the hole saw that I demonstrated works fantastic, but I kind of prefer this, this drive. Easy to make, and it always centers up in your jar there. And uh, I can use my homemade lathe on this because I don't have the center there. So it's a matter of putting it on, getting your tool rest in place and turn it on and away it goes. So thanks for watching and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Got a lot of real good videos out there on all kinds of things and hope to do a few more this winter. Um, and I'll have a I'll start the video on actually producing that project tomorrow there. So uh, I'll just show you different, uh, different stages because it, it takes quite a while to do it, especially when you're an amateur like me. So take care and, and uh, we'll see you another day.